Congresswoman-elect who upset Republican mainstay Steve Russell back in November. And Kendra Horn turned Oklahoma's 5th congressional district blue for the first time since the 70s. She now joins us this morning to discuss her election and her vision for the future. Taking a you know, video of your election night yeah. party there. So yeah. good to see you Thank and congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Glad to be here this morning. This is your first time with us in studio since your big win. Yeah. How yeah. has everything gone post victory? It has been a bit of a, whirl a whirlwind. Uh. We've been busy since the election working to get everything set up. Uh, there's two weeks of orientation, been back and forth to D.C. to get our office space there, to learn about everything that it takes to transition, and we've been working to get everything set up on the ground here. So we have not stopped since November 6th, it I can tell you that. It sounds like it, and so yeah. you, uh, everything takes effect come January. Yep, swearing in is January 3rd, so that's when we'll all officially be sworn in, take the oath of office, and, and we can get the keys to our offices in D.C. and get started uh, officially working for the people of the 5th District. Yeah, but we've already yes, started. <laughs> yes, I, I can yeah. imagine. And as I mentioned off the top, a, a monumental win for you, mm -hmm. and it was historic. Uh, you upset the mainstay, uh, Steve Russell, and, and not only that, but the party. That, that district hasn't been blue since Watergate. Mm -hmm. Uh, what does that tell you about Oklahoma, where we are as a state and, and the voters who came out for you? Well, I, I think especially in this district, one of the things that, that it told us is that people want somebody that's going to listen to them and, and talk about and work on things like health care and education and just quite frankly changing the way we do things in Washington, getting the uh, dark money and the foreign money out of our process and that's going to work hard for people on the ground here. And just one more question about your campaign. You know, mm -hmm. Russell came out with that 700-word post on Facebook calling uh, calling it breaking the silence. He cited a number of reasons for his loss, including a changing of demographics, his refusal to run negative attack ads, and also uh, millennials who have yet to embrace, quote, values that matter. Did you agree with his assessment there? Uh, I, I'll say no. Uh, and, and, and here's why. We... I believe that we won because we, we changed the way that the conversation. We got out there and we talked to people who uh, no one had talked to in a long time. We brought in voices. We did bring in young voters, and I'm proud of that. And they were talking about things that I believe, and I think a lot of Oklahomans know, matter to them on a day-to-day -day basis, whether or not they can go to the doctor when they need to, uh, whether or not their kids have a quality, affordable public education. And I don't just mean K-12. I talked to so many young people who were being buried under mountains of student loan debt. Those are very real things that we can impact. And people want uh, wanted some change in those areas. And I'm very excited to be the one to step into that. Now that you're settling into Washington, you're, you're traveling back and forth now, and work is really about to start come mm -hmm. January. What is your vision for this state? And how will Oklahomans see you working for us? Uh, my vision is to be very present. I'm planned to be back and forth uh, every weekend as much as possible, of course, in D.C. for the votes. But my vision is one of service, and that's what's always driven me. That's what got me to run is feeling that public service and people who want to do the best for our communities absolutely has to take precedence over party and politics, anything else. We've got to take care of the communities. Let's get over to some of the things happening in yeah. Washington right now. Uh, I know January 3rd is that big vote for whether or not Nancy Pelosi will become Speaker of the House. And back in November, you weren't fully endorsing her just yet. Where does your vote stand on her now? I've said since the very beginning that my vote will always be in the best interest, regardless of what it is about, in the best interest of Oklahoma and the 5th Congressional District, taking all of that into account. And I do think it's really exciting that the, the Democratic Caucus has elected some new, younger voices of leadership uh, into their, their higher ranks of leadership. And I think that's something that's been needed, uh, been we've needed for a long time. And I want to, and I wanted to from the, since the beginning, to be the voice for Oklahoma in the 5th Congressional District to uh, work to support things like expanding access to health care, making sure that we're taking care of education and lowering the cost of, of higher education. So my vote will 
be in the best interest of Oklahoma and the 5th District. And is Nancy Pelosi in the best interest of Oklahoma and the 5th District? I, I'm going to keep watching and seeing how everything okay. unfolds as it goes You haven't as decided goes, yet, is that fair forward. to say? Yeah, I'm just going to make my vote based on, on okay. the interest, yeah. Uh, and piggybacking off of that, we all saw the big meeting yesterday in the mm -hmm. Oval Office with the President, Pelosi, uh, and Schumer. They were talking about border security. Do you back Trump's vision for a border wall? I think the border, the idea of a border wall is a 15th century solution to a 21st century problem. I am incredibly concerned about the prospect of shutting down the government, needlessly shutting down the government again. It is it's truly no way to govern. And what we forget oftentimes when we talk about shutting down the government as some sort of political football uh, is that real people are affected. People who are just doing their best to serve in their capacity as public servants uh, from it, people who serve at Tinker to uh, to people in, in uh, Social Security or other offices, they're the ones that are impacted. They don't get paid when we shut down the government. And it is up to our elected officials to make sure we keep it open. And yes, we need to take care of border security, but shutting down the government is not the way to do it. Okay, copy that. Mrs. Horn, if you wouldn't mind sticking yeah. around for one more segment. Absolutely. Up next, we have a lot of your questions about the future of Oklahoma yeah. and kind of where you stand on yeah. some issues. Thank you so much.